This is my favourite text of the night. If Marco Antonio Barrera has a metal plate in his head, wouldn't it be advisable for Amir Khan to get one in his chin to help his long-term career? That's from Lee in Surrey. We're talking about Amir Khan and that fight against Barrera in Manchester. Guys, look forward to this one because when, when it first came out, nobody could quite believe it, could they? Yeah, we were talking about it on the show last month and it actually was announced on the day of the show last month. And we were saying at that time, there are certain fights that are announced, not necessarily world title fights, and this isn't, when you just sit back and say, wow. And, and this was one of those. And there are so many elements to it because the, the general theme of, of people I've been talking to over the last month or so is that if Barrera has got... 60 70 percent left of, of what made him great then it'll be too much for amir khan has he got that much left and and will amir khan finally finally show in the professional ring what he had in the amateur ring and for all the talk about them being different sports these days if, if you look at the composure and the assurance he showed against mario kinderlan in the olympic final and in, and in his last fight as an amateur you know that that was a special performance a, a gifted fighter at the age of 17 there is still something there I believe in Amir Khan that we're not seeing as a pro and, and will this be the night that that comes out will he be one of those who's better against better opposition and one of those things that we, we talked about what it is that's possibly missing and we talked to Freddie Roach about this on that show Mike and he said he is going to monitor the mate weight because uh, in a, one of my pet theories is that I think he may be losing too much weight he may be struggling to make the weight and that may be weakening him and that may be why he's reacting like he has on several occasions three times or twice in the Prescott fight and several times before when he went over from fairly innocuous looking clips and th this particular fight uh, that everyone's looking for a reason for it not to happen it's too good to be true it won't happen one rumor is Barrera knew nothing about it another rumor is that Barrera uh, Barrera didn't really want it Don King knew nothing about it who's promoting Barrera then Barrera fights and gets a small cut and then of course there's the metal plate in the head I mean <laughs> there's no way this fight's gonna happen I mean I mean even though the tickets had sold out or ne nearly sold out at the MEN there, you know, no one's considering this fight as a fight that's going to happen. Mike, well, they were. if you could, if people have just joined us, just quickly in 20 seconds, tell us about the metal plate thing with, with Barrera, because we're going to move on to that in a moment. Yeah, well, this story surfaced in late 2003. He was just about to fight Manny Pacquiao, and a few weeks earlier, he'd split from his long-time management company and basically from Team Barrera. And Team Barrera decided to put out this story that... A few years earlier, back in 1997, Marco Antonio Barrera had had surgery and, and um, to remove some abnormal veins in his brain or around that area and had a metal plate inserted at that point. And so this, this is just, it's grown and grown over the years. I mean, I'll give you an example. It's, I mean, it's been in magazines, it's been in newspapers, it's yeah. been on websites for the best part of five, six years now. And, and here's, here's an example of, of what you can read. And this is the Associated Press, a news agency, November 2003. Barrera goes into the ring on Saturday night in Texas with a metal plate in his head. Yeah. And before fact, anyone gets fact. too alarmed over his ability to reason, consider this. He's already fought 16 times Since with the metal. So this really is accepted fact. And if you put, oh, gosh, yeah. if you put Barrera and metal plates into mm. a, a search engine, it all comes yeah. up well. Are we going to blow the myth apart tonight? Because let's speak to Robert Smith, the new General Secretary of the British Boxing Board of Control, who has a take on the metal plate. Robert, can you clear up the issue for good? Well, I hope I can. Um, <laughs> as Mike said, it's an old story. I think I, I remember when uh, I was Assistant General Secretary dealing with the similar story in 99 when he was over here to fight Paul mm -hmm. Lloyd. And we supplied, we received all the medical details, scans, etc. At that time, he was past fit to box, no evidence of a metal plate, uh, no problem at all. And then, obviously, when I heard the fight was going to be announced, was was was, uh, was announced against uh, Mr. Khan, I obviously thought, oh, straight away, some more stories on a metal plate. And um, we've received all the medical details. We've got scan uh, reports going back uh, many, many years. They're always compared. Um, there's no evidence of a metal plate anywhere. So what, what sort of documents have you got, Robert? Just, just, just give us a clue and, and, and to, to, you know, to quash this one once and for all. Well, as, as you know, boxers, certainly in Great Britain and now in the United States, are, are scanned, MRI scanned every year. We have all the reports and we have doctors, um, notes from doctors and reports from doctors advising 
what they've done. Um, you know as well as I do, Mike, that um, you know he's been boxing in Nevada, uh, California, New Jersey. I mean, these are some of the best commissions in the world, and their medical requirements are second to none. Just I think is like us, and I think we are the best on the medical front in the world. Um, so. You know, I just can't believe it. We've we got the, the and I, I, the disappointment. The story keeps going. Although it's a good story, yes, but it just I, I keeps gonna, going. You, say, know. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, you, you must admit, it is a cracking, it's a cracking yarn, Rob. Oh, but, it's a, it's but, a corker. Well, I mean, what, what's interesting about it this time round is that no one's really been brave enough to write about it, and no one's really been brave enough until about four or five minutes ago on Five Live here, <laughs> live I have to say from London, not Geneva, to actually mention it. Yeah. <laughs> Frank, no disrespect to Frank Warren, he must have been having kittens about 10 minutes ago <laughs> thinking we were going to come on air and say there's a metal plate in his head the fight's off well, you, can re you can relax frank there's no metal plate the fight's on well if you look at his record if he did have one and it's moved to his fist because he's not most people out of box, so. uh no i mean you know on the medical evidence we have uh, we are very very happy with everything we've supplied and we're very happy for him to box amir khan so just, just for the benefit, Robert, of, of those listening who are not boxing fans and, and, and don't know much about the sport, what happens when Marco Antonio Barrera arrives over here before you give him final clearance to box? Well, we, we will receive authorization and medical details from the state they are at. Um, in fact, um, Barrera only recently was in Florida mm -hmm. where he had all his medicals done, and those will include his physical examination, all his blood results, which is HIV, Hep B, and Hepatitis C, and an MRI and an MRI brain scan. And then all those reports are forwarded to us, along with any other documents that we may require with regard to clear any issues up. And we've received all them. All those medicals are in order. Um, as I say, we've got the, the scan reports for going back numerous years where there's been no change and no evidence of anything untoward. Uh, we have them in the office, and, and in fact, I think they're going to be signed off tomorrow. So it looks to me, Rob, like the people that he split from got sour grapes and just put out an absolute myth. Just, no, not a myth, a lie, a fib. They invented something. Well, I don't know what they said, but you know, you know as well as I do, things get, get altered and somebody says something over the course of a period of time, things get altered. It's no different in boxing than in life, is it? So uh, yeah. maybe they were trying to cause some mischief, but uh, until, uh, unfortunately, we're still talking about it. I mean, he thinks they were. I mean, the strange thing is, he, he must have had something like 20 fights since then, Robin, <laughs> and people have just gone with this story. Constantly, <laughs> constantly yeah. <laughs> it's one of the great... Can you think of another myth, maybe in boxing or well, another sport, well, that, that, like this, it just keeps going well, you, and you, running and no you, one denies it? Absolutely, you mentioned it earlier on, it was the uh, split glove, you know. I mean, still reading some books. I was reading a book over the weekend, uh, and it was telling me, oh, there was 11 minutes, 7 minutes, 5 minutes. I, I, I'm told it was about 62, 63 seconds. It was 63 Dun seconds, yeah. yeah. Dundee, Dundee admits he pulls the glove slightly to get the referee's attention, but they don't They don't replace the glove, and it's about well, 63 seconds. It's been timed. Henry Cooper has it at about, well, 15 and a half minutes. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they left Highbury, went to Beach Street to the Lonsdale shop and bought a new glove by bus. By gets, bus, by the way. It gets 10 seconds longer every year, yeah. <laughs> like the there's why, actually why a not? recording. There's why a recording not? of well, why the fight. Not, Robert? You're absolutely right, yeah. Sorry, Robert, there's, there's a recording of the uh, of the fight in, in the BBC's archives, and, and it's been timed many times 63. at 63 seconds. And in fact, Robert, is it is it right that the Board of Control after that fight introduced a rule that there should always be a replacement set of gloves beneath the ring in, in, in case something like that should happen? Because there weren't any any available gloves on the night. No, well, I, mean, I wasn't working for the Board then, but I can, <laughs> yeah, I come can on, tell Robert. you that uh, I, may, I may look as though I did, but uh, <laughs> no, um, yes. Obviously, now after that contest, there is replacement gloves at ringside for every every championship contest that takes place. Yeah. Thanks, Rob. No problem. Robert Smith, great to have you on tonight. That's uh, Robert Smith from the uh, British Boxing Board of Control. Now. Uh